Hey guys, Brenda New Productions here. Now, as I was making my uh, my platformer tutorial series, I've been working on a few of those videos. I noticed that I'm using a lot of things that I haven't officially gone over in my actual Java tutorials. So today, I present to you uh, another installment of the uh, Learning How to Program with Java tutorial series. And in this episode, uh, we will be talking about how to catch errors using try and catch. Now, this has been actually discussed in a few of my videos, but today I'm actually going to give you a uh, an actual lesson on the uh, try-catch statements. So, when you're creating a program, like always, you create a public static void main. Um, and this is where all of your code is actually executed. So, what we're going to do is we're actually going to um, to try and reproduce an error. So let's say we have int x equal to 0 and int y equal to 2. Now let's say we want to have int um, answer equal to y divided by x. And then we're going to print out the answer. So we're jumping right into the program here. So what we're going to see is we're actually dividing 2 by 0, which by arithmetic laws we cannot do because you cannot divide anything by 0. So what we do is uh, when we run this program, we can actually look down at the console and see that it says exception in thread main java.lang.arithmetic exception divide by 0. So obviously there's a problem with this and it throws an error to the user because you cannot actually divide by a zero in math. However, say you do not want this error to um, to actually be displayed by the to the user. Um, that's definitely a possibility uh, because you don't want their their program to stop running and then just uh, just throw an error. So what we can do is we can actually catch this error and uh, prevent this error message from showing up. So how we do this is I'm just going to delete all this code that we have. We put this inside of what's called a try block. Um, now the try block it does exactly what it sounds like it does. Um, it tries to do something. So we're going to try to make int x equal to zero. Try to make int y equal to two. And we're going to try to make int answer equal to y divided by x, which which is the same code that we used as last time. And then we're going to system dot out dot print line answer. Um, okay, so it's going to try to do this. Now, if an error occurs during this, uh, it will actually catch the error. And what it will do with that error, we get to describe, which is pretty fun. So <laughs> we can um, we can actually tell it what to do with a the next statement called catch. So it's going to try this, and then we're going to catch a, an exception. So what what this format is, is first of all you want to describe what type of error you want to catch. If you look down at this uh, error message, we see that it's called java.lang.arithmetic exception. So we want to catch an arithmetic exception. So anytime an arithmetic exception occurs, we're going to do um, whatever we're going to say. And this is actually a variable right here. Uh, so we're creating a new variable that we can use, so I'm just going to call this math error. And then we open up our curly braces because now we get to describe what exactly we want to do if this error occurs. So basically what we want to do is we want to say system.out.println print line a math error has occurred. Occurred? I think that's how you spelled occurred. You probably divided by zero. So now we can actually um, save this and run it. And as you can see, instead of that nasty red error popping up, instead the console just says, a math error has occurred, you probably divided by zero. Okay, that's good. So there are a few more things we can actually do with this. One thing that we can do is instead of um, telling it to print out this, we can say math error dot print stack trace. So this is just telling the error that we defined here, the arithmetic exception, to print the stack trace which is exactly what it was doing before. It'll give you this nasty red text, but this helps you when you're actually debugging because now you know where the error occurred. Um, a couple more things you can do is you can actually print out the official message uh, that it gives you. So we can say print out math error dot get message. And that will simply print out 
divided by zero. So if you want to really be um, user friendly, you can do something like this. You can print out error and then the math message. So it'll say error divided by zero, but it won't actually stop execution of the program and display that gross red text error. Okay, so in order to enhance this a little bit, um, we can we can uh, make this a little better by saying if math error dot get message or actually we're going to create a string first to hold the error message uh, message equal to math error dot get message and with this message we can actually use it to provide the user with a very very specific um, error outline that doesn't look nasty so we could say print um, whoops so first we need to check if this error message is um, is telling us that we divided by zero. So if error message dot equals divide by zero, so that's the exact error that it gives us, then we want to system dot out dot print line um, you cannot divide by zero. And if it doesn't say if the error message does not say that we divided by zero, we're just going to say system dot out dot print line math error. So this will provide the user with nice feedback on what they tried to do. So we press run and it just gives us the plain English method message you cannot divide by zero. So then we know we can't divide by zero here. Alright, so now that we know how to efficiently catch errors, um, what happens if we make another error uh, happen at the same time as this? For example, we have int answer equal to y divided by x, and we don't do anything with answer because that just throws us the error. Um, but let's think of another error we can do. Um, okay, we can say, I don't know if this will provide us with an error, but we can say string message equal to null, and then if we system.out.println message, it may give us a null pointer exception. Oops. We're going to comment out this code. Okay, now it just prints out this string null. So what we're trying to do is make it so it gives us a null pointer exception. Can we do int x? No. Um, I, I, you know, I really can't think of one off the top of my head. Hold on, let me look up on the internet. Okay, sorry about that. So I went on the internet and I actually looked up a quick example of a null pointer exception, and I can't believe I didn't figure that. Uh, think of this, but um, what we're doing is we're creating a new object here, and we're actually setting its value equal to null. So essentially, it is nothing. And then we are actually trying to operate on the object and produce its hash code. Um, and if we run this, it actually throws us a null pointer exception. But as you can see, as it throws us this null pointer exception, it gives us the nasty red text that just means there's a generic error. We did not actually catch this error. The reason being is because this produces a null pointer exception error, as we can see here, java.lang.null pointer exception. And we only catch arithmetic exceptions. Um, so what we can do is we can actually set up another catch statement call or and what we want to do is catch null pointer exception so null pointer exception and then we're just going to NPE stands for null pointer exception and then what we can do um, is we're just going to system dot whoop, out dot print line NPE dot get message so now if we actually run the program instead of um, it showing us this null pointer exception error, it simply prints out null because that is the message of the null pointer exception. And we can also say null pointer exception just to give a little more detailed information because if it's catching a null pointer exception then it's obviously going to say um, is obviously going to be a null pointer exception. Now what if you actually, instead of catching specific errors like arithmetic exceptions and null pointer exceptions, you want to actually 
catch uh, all errors. Well, that can be done uh, with a catch exception. So what we're doing here is instead of specifying that we're catching an arithmetic exception or a null pointer exception, we're simply catching all exceptions. So we can go ahead and delete this code. And now we can say system.out.println. There has been an error. And then we can say plus e dot whoop dot get message. So now if we run it, it says there has been an error in null because it, ca it caught this null pointer exception error. And if we actually uncomment our divide by zero error code, we can run it, and now it says there has been an error, error my bad, <laughs> divide by zero. So it catches both exceptions and uh, deals with them. Now, what if you want to actually catch this first excep exception, but then actually continue executing the code? I'm pretty sure you can do that with the continue co uh, command just to be sure um, maybe um, oh oh yes <laughs> that's right you can sorry about that that was my um, visual basic mind at its best right there because in visual basic you can simply press continue or type in continue and everything will continue but say you want to um, it wants to continue uh, the code after this error is caught. So what you're actually going to want to do is you're going to want to put each statement in its own try block. So we just simply copied and pasted the old uh, try catch block and then we're going to create a new one here exception e or system.out.println error plus e.get message. So now we have effectively tr two try blocks each one is doing its own thing. So the first one is testing um, the uh, divided by zero error, and the second one is testing the null pointer exception error. So we're just going to go ahead and run the program, and as you can see, it prints out both error messages. There's been an error divided by zero and error null. So overall, that is um, a very, or pretty much the standard way to uh, actually handle errors. However, when you're programming, and you don't know if an error is going to occur somewhere, like here and here we purposely set up errors. But if you don't know when an error is going to occur somewhere, like for example, if we weren't aware that we couldn't divide by zero, um, and you're trying to try something, you're going to want to press or make the catch print the stack trace. Because not only does that provide a detailed uh, description of the error, so for example, we have a arithmetic exception, we divided by zero, at uh, this line, but specifically it provides us with the line so we know exactly where the error occurred. And this is very helpful when actually debugging a program. So hopefully you enjoyed this detailed tutorial about uh, using try and catch to catch errors in uh, an application. In the next tutorial we will be going uh, over the try catch finally block, which is just an extension of the try catch block. So thanks for watching, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I hope you all have a fantastic day.